please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Dave Williams, editor here with today's video, hot and cold tears. First, we've got your common cold tear, then your geometry cold tear, and finally, your hot tear. Bad tears all. Here's a preview. Let's get into some tears here in regards to temperature. Uh, one of the first ones that we see more often than not is something called a cold tear, which sounds really ridiculous when you're talking about going at Mach 5 with your hair on fire at the track. But cold tear is by far the most common one that I see. Cold tears will destroy a tire in two sessions, and I mean rip it to pieces. You'll have nothing left. It'll be a total disaster. And 300 bucks or whatever they cost in your part of the world is just chucked down the drain. If you're going through that many tires, can I be sponsored, please? I'm really good with tires. I'm cheap. I make them work. Can you heal that and make it perfectly even again? You're damn right you can. Absolutely. All right, rear tires. Do you think there is a universal mold used by every company on the planet so that every 19050 is the same circumference, every 19055 is the same circumference, and every 200 or 18060 is the same circumference? No. Which is bigger? They're all the same size. See where this becomes a problem now? If you were drag racing, they are meticulous about something called rollout, which is tire circumference. That is absolutely essential to them. But with us, we spoon on new tires and we never measure circumference differences. In particular, and where we're most at fault, is that I have to have more grip. I am going from my 180-55 rear to a 200 rear. Okay, if you're going to go do that, what happened to the chassis? Let's take a look at a rear geometry tear. We've got a couple of them to show, and they're both going to show you the same thing. And we've got a Pirelli, and we have a Dunlop. One of the most common mistakes is going to the track, I need a bigger rear tire because I need more grip. No, you need the skills to utilize more grip, and if you're going to do that, then obviously you need to understand what putting a bigger tire on did to your overall chassis pitch or stance or balance. You have to understand what you've done. When you ride in the morning, you don't want to be part of Darwinism at the track. By the second session, you've kind of found your feet again and your eyes are somewhat calibrated to speed and reference point. And by the third session in the morning, everybody's kind of found a groove and a rhythm and you're moving through traffic or you're dealing with your laps with a lot more consistency. What that does from morning to lunchtime is actually mean that the tires are sustaining more heat because you are braking harder. Your corner entry speed is up, your mid corner speed is up, and you are generally speaking on the throttle harder. So the tire gets hotter. One of the things that people do with tires is set and forget. If you're going appreciably faster and then at lunchtime the ambient temperature gets hotter again, well now you're really putting the screws to the tires, especially the rear tire because of the horsepower and speed and throttle. So in this case, hot tear is definitely an easy tear to find in the morning. Catch the full video at DaveMossTuning.com.